Put the stereotypical Michigan performance together with the stereotypical Rutgers performance, and you get exactly what we saw on Saturday. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis of the game we all love. Be a fan. Just don't be a dumb fan. Michigan 31, Rutgers 7, Big Ten opener for the Maize and Blue. Of course, Rutgers notched a win against Northwestern. Right out of the game. Rutgers didn't necessarily look like the Rutgers that we're accustomed to because they hit Michigan with a quick strike slant touchdown pass from uh, Gavin Wimsat to Christian Dremel, 7-0 Scarlet Knights. And this would bode well for the Scarlet Knights, not necessarily in this game, but in things to come. This is a better football team than it's been since they joined the Big Ten for the most part. Still the same type of football team. They want to run it for 300 yards. They want to throw it for 150 yards. Uh, They want to run heavy 75% of the time. They want to control the clock, control the line of scrimmage, and be a tough, physically dominant football team. But Rutgers can't do that against the likes of Michigan and the top tier in the Big Ten, but especially Michigan. They cannot play Michigan's game and defeat Michigan. So let's also understand that Gavin Wimsatt has a higher ceiling than any Rutgers quarterback that we've seen in quite some time and probably the best Scarlet Knights quarterback since Gary Nova. We're going to go with that. Wimsett to Dremel, 7-0 right out of the gate. And then the first Michigan series, Tyeem Powell with a sack of J.J. McCarthy, and Rutgers was off to a nice start and actually at times had an opportunity to possibly take a two-score lead. Kyle Manongai, the Rutgers starting running back, the guy that is uh, near the top of the rushing statistics in college football through three weeks, uh, hit up Temple a couple weeks ago for 165 yards and about 140 yards last week in the big win by 19 points over Virginia Tech. But on this day against a Michigan defensive line that is one of the best in college football, 11 carries for 27 yards. But on that second drive, nice run by Manon guy, but uh, number 72 had on that series a hold and a false start, and that put Rutgers behind the sticks, and Rutgers is not going to get past that. They do not have that kind of offense. So Michigan stays within 7 to nothing. Wolverines tie it. Back-to-back creative plays here by the Michigan offense. Uh, they cut Donovan Edwards loose on the play in which they slip him behind the line of scrimmage. They run him down the line, slip him out there, tossed him the football for 33 yards before he was forced out of bounds. And then, of course, uh, Colston Loveland, who emerged uh, in the back half of last season, uh, beat two defenders. He had five catches for 75 yards. Excellent play by Colston Loveland. And Blake Corm took it in from there. His 40th career touchdown, eighth in it, uh, on this particular season, 7-7 game, and then you knew it was over from then. This is a Scarlet Knights team that led Michigan in Piscataway at halftime last year, and two years ago, they really slowed down the game, played their kind of game, ball control and possession, squeezed the clock, and got Michigan into a tough game, 20-13 loss there two years ago against the eventual Big Ten champions. They tried to do the same today with the flair of a passing game, and we will talk a little bit more about that. Michigan missed a field goal. Uh, Of course, that's uh, James Turner, the Louisville transfer, who hit on 20 of 22, but he's no Jake Moody, and he missed this one, did connect later, and uh, so... Rutgers stayed in the game for quite some time. They only trailed 14-7 to at half. Also keep in mind, Will Johnson, who's been plagued by a leg injury, played well, a couple tackles, tackle for loss, played most of the game, if not all the game. Rod Moore, the standout safety who had 71 tackles last year as he emerged as one of the better players at his position in the Big Ten, he got into the game momentarily, but uh, he was taken back to the sideline, may have re aggravated uh, his injury. We will have to find out more from Coach Jim Harbaugh in his Tuesday press conference. Speaking of which, Jim Harbaugh back on the sideline, of course, for Michigan football. So everything back to norm for the maize in blue. 
Elsewhere in this one, we wanted to note uh, Miles Hinton at right tackle, whipped on a sack. Wesley Bailey comes off the edge, just overpowered Hinton. That led to a sack and stopped a Michigan drive that made it 17-7. to This was early second half. And, of course, the whole key to this ball game is that Michigan controlled the line of scrimmage. I don't want to say dominated on both sides, but especially on the defensive side. Rutgers couldn't run the ball. They only had like 50 yards rushing late in the game. It was more about uh, Rutgers was able to throw the ball a little bit, show some semblance of a passing game. And I noted that on Twitter today that Rutgers threw the ball against a quality opponent better than I've seen them ever, pretty much ever, meaning in the last 10 years since they joined the Big Ten. Uh, Gavin Wim said on a particular drive, and this was really the key to the game. The game came down to this in terms of Rutgers having any chance of winning. Down 17-7, driving. Wim said had hit some nice throws uh, to the sidelines and really some well-conceived out routes, some NFL-type throws, deep outs to the sideline, two or three of those to get in position, and then on fourth and two, down by 10, mid-third quarter. Uh, it wasn't so much Gamps, uh, Gavin Wimsat's fault because he had to run the play. It's fourth and two. He's got to throw the ball. He can't just throw it away. Got to try to make something happen. But Mike Sandra still, the entire Michigan defense, saw it coming. Uh, they wanted to delay screen to the left, blew it up. Mike Sandra still, the former wide receiver, picked it off and didn't snap from there. Used his uh, offensive skill uh, moves to take it for the pick six. And then it was all said and done from there. 24-7, Michigan goes on to the win. 31-7. to One to also note in this game that J.J. McCarthy coming off the three interception. Bad game against Bowling Green. Generally bounced back on a 15-24 of day. Although 15-21 of day for J.J. McCarthy. Although I got to say he didn't look as sharp as he did the first two weeks of the season. But the Rutgers defense is much better. This is a pretty good team in some instances here. Uh, Good running back. The quarterback has a high ceiling of talent. Uh, He's not polished. Uh, The defense is pretty good. Blake Corum, 21 carries, 97 yards. Actually, the Rutgers rush defense was solid against the two backs. Donovan Edwards only had six carries, 13 yards. And again, Corum started to break free in the second half. This always happens in these type of matchups. Uh, the inferior team starts to break down. The, the defense is on the field too much. Really, J.J. McCarthy helped uh, continue a lot of these drives on the read option, keeping the ball and gaining valuable uh, first down, seven carries for J.J., 51 yards on this one. So there it is for Michigan football. They march on to 4-0. and For Rutgers, they lose their first game of the year, but there is hope that they will win some games in the Big Ten. Indiana's coming up. Did not check the schedule to see what's on the horizon, but of course, the Michigan schedule is backloaded. So leave your comments to, uh, down below concerning your thoughts about Michigan. If this showed us anything at all for me, not necessarily much of anything. Michigan D-line, first rate. The defense overall, first rate. Sure, that the the play that they gave up the touchdown, the 69 yarder right out of the gate, that wasn't even that poorly defended uh, to a certain extent. That was a bullet. It was right in stride. And uh, yes, the defense, uh, the safety bit and should have should played a little safer and not come up so quickly. So uh, the receiver Dremel burned the defense. But hey, you're going to give up big plays. But Michigan gave up little else on this day. Your thoughts about the Wolverines? Your thoughts about Rutgers football? Would love to hear from the Rutgers fans as well. Join us each and every Saturday night, late night, after the primetime games. We've got a Ohio State to Notre Dame watch party. We're going to watch the game together, and then we do our late night call-in show after all the primetime games right here at the Voice of College Football. Give me a call, and we will talk college football.